If you had to pick one gold coin, and ideally a lot of that one gold coin to take anywhere in the world, everywhere in the world, which would it be? So about 15 years ago, I bought my first one ounce gold coin. I went into a shop to grab an American gold eagle, but I left with the gold maple leaf. And if you look at them next to each other, you can start to see why, because this gold maple leaf just has a little bit of something extra, a little extra magic. And maybe that's just the alloy, because whatever it is about gold that will draw you in, it's amplified with purity. And that makes sense if this is just a simple matter of how pure the gold content is, because the gold maple leaf is as pure as they get. Now, all of this is just emotional surface level stuff, but I have always thought this was the best looking gold coin available. I think that's more or less the topic of my third video on YouTube. So full disclosure here, I don't know if or when the Royal Canadian Mint heard me mention that before, but I'll just say that I'm pretty honored because they reached out, they asked if I'd be interested in making a sponsored post where I give my thoughts on the gold maple leaf. So easy yes for me. And to be clear, this is promotional, but I'm only going to tell you what I think about the coin personally. Now, if we're doing a good, bad, and ugly review of the gold maple leaf, there's really only one con in my mind. And I'm gonna to get to it in a minute, but I think the idea of the gold maple leaf is a little bit more interesting than a detailed review of the coin itself. So we're gonna do that. So coming out of the gate, I'm just gonna say there are probably seven gold coins that you could feel pretty safe buying. Coins that will be well known, they're easy to find, they're easy to sell, and of those seven, they all have different pros and cons. Five are gonna be 24 karat, two are 22 karat, two have advanced security features, they're easy to verify in a shop or at a glance. All of these things are important because we aren't talking about one single gold coin. We're talking about stacks of them. Buying them over time is a strategy. And if you're buying gold as a plan, something you're going to do with any scale, really, you want to do it in a way that doesn't limit your use cases. And being able to sell quickly, of course, is an important use case. Now, as a spoiler, if you're in Canada, there's just no better option than the gold maple leaf. Your pros and cons grid, it's pretty simple. It's all pros, it's no cons. Now, if you live somewhere with no clear regional favorite, no state mint, the gold maple leaf might still be the best option because beyond this just being a gorgeous coin, well, its features and its history make it possibly the only coin you could say is popular just about anywhere in the world. And for the record, none of that should be news here. I've been saying that since long before I knew the Royal Canadian Mint was cool enough to reach out. Nobody's pressing me to say that, but we're going to go down a layer deeper here because I don't live in Canada. So if I'm buying gold, again, not just one single gold coin, well, I have a little bit more to consider. Is another spoiler here, the gold maple leaf is one of three coins I like at scale. Now, people are gonna say gold is gold, they might even believe it for whatever use case they have, but that's not true in general. It's not good advice, generally speaking. Dealers prefer certain coins, they prefer popular coins, it's just common sense. A dealer's gonna buy what they can sell. Now the seven coins that I referred to earlier are the American gold eagles, the gold buffalo, the gold maple leaf, the Krugerrand, Britannia's kangaroos, and Philharmonics. The first three are going to be the most popular anywhere that I've ever been in the United States. And either because of that, or maybe because I came to it on my own, those first three are my favorite too. So I guess I like what's most popular. Maybe I'm basic. Some are gonna argue the Krugerrand should be in that initial popularity tier as well. That definitely used to be the case. I'm not gonna fight that. Nobody's saying your Krugerrand is ugly, at least not yet. Now here in the United States, shops sell maples and Krugerrands at a lower premium than Eagles or Buffalo. So if cost is your only marker, maples and Krugerrands are going to be cheaper. So there's your decision, pretty easy. But this is where it gets maybe a little bit more complicated. You have to consider more than price. An American Gold Eagle is going to be more popular in the United States. So the question is whether that additional premium makes it worth it. And don't quote me here because everyone has different pricing, but my expectation is that an Eagle will cost spot price of gold plus a 6% premium. And a gold maple leaf will cost spot plus 3%. So that's about a $60 difference today for each one ounce gold coin. And if I was selling them back to a dealer, 
I would expect to get more back for an eagle or a buffalo, but not $60 more. So the gold maple leaf is cheaper and the buy to sell spread is tighter. So if we were building a case for the gold maple leaf, as I just said, they're cheaper. They're 24 karat and as pure as you can possibly get. They have much better security than a lot of what's out there. Maybe I should show that here in a minute. And I'm sorry, but they just have better quality control than certain other mints. We all know about wonky buffalo. So if I'm buying anything other than a gold maple leaf, it has to do with something other than all of that. And there's really only one other consideration, and that is regional popularity. Now, if that wasn't in the pros and cons matrix, this would be a really short video because on top of everything I already mentioned, the purity, the security, I also just think this is the best looking gold coin, but that's subjective. Uh, earlier, I mentioned the gold maple leaf is potentially the only gold bullion coin that's popular just about anywhere in the world, and that has to do with regional preferences for 24 karat gold. And Canada is a good example. They tax you on 22 karat gold, like the Eagle or the Krugerrand, so do other countries. And that preference for 24 karat gold goes even further in a lot of Asian countries. So if you're looking for pure gold bullion, that cuts out the two coins, the American Gold Eagle and the South African Krugerrand, that would compete with the gold maple leaf in terms of sales and international popularity. So I'm a huge fan of gold in general, but I mentioned eagles, buffaloes, and gold maple leaves being at the top of my list. And I just mentioned the 22 karat gold con for eagles. With buffaloes, it's a little bit different. Mostly it's about cost. Buffaloes cost more. You have to decide if that's worth it to you. Well, buffaloes also don't have any security features. Now, it would take a lot to sneak a fake buffalo past me, but I spend a fair amount of time shuffling around gold coins. Now, here's where the gold maple leaf gets cooler. The radial lines on the new coins, their machine to tolerance is in the micron territory that is small it's going to make creating a fake a huge effort even if it's possible i don't know if it is then you have the micro leaf and i think they have a better name for it but the mini leaf mark it's micro engraved with the laser so if you were to look at it under magnification you would see a mini leaf inside the mini leaf and then the year the coin was minted so that means regardless of whether you're an oddball who shuffles gold coins around all day you can still get out a magnifying glass and verify that micro engraving. And not good enough, well, they have the bullion DNA feature that allows certain scanners to further verify each coin. It's gonna knock out any question of authenticity at all. Now with the Buffalo, I think it's more a case of just biting into it, seeing if you break a tooth or not. So what else? Well, the Royal Canadian Mint is pretty proud of the purity of their coins. They have a brief for people who might not know much about their coins. It mentions, the coins are four nines fine. That means they're 99.99% pure. Didn't mention what that remaining 0.01% is. It could be maple syrup for all I know. It just doesn't matter much to me because the Royal Canadian Mint has been leading this whole topic. They were the first mint to produce three nines fine gold coins. They were the first to produce four nines fine gold coins. And if that's not good enough, well, they were also the first to produce five nines gold coins. I'm pretty sure they're the only mint to offer coins of that purity. So I told you there's one negative. If you were to sell 25 or more one ounce gold maple leaf coins to a dealer in the United States, that dealer is required to send a 1099B tax form on your behalf. Same goes for Krugerrand, same goes for Mexican coins. This is just a little heads up to the IRS that you might have a capital gain or loss to explain. Now, is that a con? I suppose it depends on who you ask. Capital gains reporting is required in the United States regardless of the coin. So if you're going to be selling 25 gold coins to a dealer in one shot, hoping nobody ever finds out, well, you sound interesting, but there probably aren't very many of you watching this. So that's your take from a relative outsider on the gold maple leaf. Now, I think it's the best looking sovereign mint program coin, but that's subjective. You've got purity. They are definitely the first to hit those top standards. They literally set the bar. Security, well, they were the first there too. Liquidity, they're easy to sell anywhere I know of that buys gold coins. Now, they're the top two anywhere in the world. You would probably be able to say they're the top three though anywhere in the world. We'll just call that an educated guess. As far as value goes, they're my lower cost go-to. Have been for 15 years, and I'm pretty sure that sums it all up. So I don't have anything else to tell you. So thank you for sponsoring this Royal Canadian Mint. You're already pretty great in my book, but 
you found a way to be a little greater. So if you're still with us, let us know what your favorite all-around gold coin is. Is it the gold maple leaf? Maybe it's something else, but I can't see anyone ever being sad they have one. Or a chest of them, depending on who you are, but let us know what you think. And then while you're in the comments, be sure to hit that like button if you found any of this interesting. Be sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on if you'd like to see more on the topic. And if you're still here, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care, eh?